Emeka Ahedioha loses once again as the Supreme Court has refused to restore him as the governor of Imo State. And the Kaduna State Governor, Nasser El Rufai, says no to any possibility of amnesty and negotiations with bandits in the state. This is PLOS Politics and I am Felicity Ezewike. You're welcome. Now, the Supreme Court, in a decision by a panel of justices led by Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Tanko Mohammed, has reiterated the judgment it gave on January 14, which declared Hope Uzadima of the All Progressive Congress APC as the legally elected governor of Imo State. The Apex Court stated that there is no constitutional provision for setting aside an earlier Supreme Court judgment and that the verdict of the Supreme Court is a finality. Joining us to have a conversation on this via telephone is legal practitioner Raybond and Kanebe. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Felicity, for this opportunity. Straight up, uh, there were missed expectations to what the Supreme Court would do with this very seemingly novel uh, situation. What was your expectations before this ruling and what is your reaction now? as we have a ruling. Thank you very much. My expectation was that the Supreme Court would have used the rare opportunity to redeem itself in the in its decision over the Imo State's gubernatorial election. Unfortunately, with, with what we are hearing today, uh, the court has refused to enter that very rare moment of glory. But for the dissenting judgment of one of the judges that sat in the panel, I mean Justice Chima Sentus Mweze. For me, he is the person who has um, given a judgment that accords with the popular will of the people of Imo State, who filed out on the 9th of March, 2019, to vote for Governor Emeka Ihedioha. Let, let, let me interject here and ask you about that particular um, uh, dissenting uh, voice of uh, Justice Weze. Uh, now, he is saying that there was need for the Supreme Court to review its position. When you just oppose that to the other seven just, uh, the other six justices who said that, I mean, they cannot uh, review um, a decision of the Supreme Court, of what relevance is his position in the larger scheme of things now? Well, unfortunately, a dissenting judgment is not the judgment of the court. The rule or the principle is that however articulate, profound, or erudite a dissenting judgment may be, it does not form the opinion of the court. Be that as it may, dissenting judgments, as we have seen in our jurisprudence, have always been, the, 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 it has always led to a departure or helped to build the jurisprudence in subsequent cases. So whereas the other six judges have refused to bow to the principle of finality of the court decision without adverting its mind to circumstances whereby they can depart from those decisions. What Wednesday has shown is that justice must be done at all times, even though the heavens may fall. What is that? What, what, I mean, going forward, what will history be saying about this case? We'll come to some other questions that are coming up, but what will history be saying about this case? This is the Supreme Court. To the layman, it is the final bus stop when it comes to legal matters and the quest for justice. We have this seemingly um, final decision that doesn't look like it is final from where I'm standing, um, a lot of Nigerians as well. Well, it's, it's very, very, very unfortunate. Like I told you, I thought the court would have used the opportunity of this application to redeem itself. Unfortunately, the court has refused to, uh, to use seize that opportunity. Uh, I'm not, I've felt the pulse of Nigerians, and the popular opinion is that uh, the current judiciary, as led by Justice Tanko Mohammed, has not, has not quite been the kind of judiciary that you would expect in a nascent democracy as ours. But be that as it may, um, we hope that uh, in subsequent cases, 
the Supreme Court will also have the opportunity to depart from this decision because one of the accepted uh, instances where the court can do that is where such a case comes before it again, and then the court will now have the opportunity, this time within its appellate jurisdiction, to now depart from that decision. Let, let, let me ask you this question, just for those that might have missed the point. You seem not to be um, very happy with the decision of the Supreme Court. Could you take us down memory lane and explain the reasons why this review was called for in the first place? Okay. The review was called for, uh, I guess, the backdrop of the fact that the judgment of the court on the 14th of January seem not to accord with verifiable facts and the principle of elections. What am I trying to say? The number of votes that the Supreme Court returned for Hope Uzodima, after adding the votes from the so-called 388 polling units, exceeded the total number of accredited voters. Now, in the principle of elections, it does not stand to reason that total vote cast should exceed total accredited voters. That is outright fallacy, right? Secondly, Section 179, Subsection 2 of our Constitution provides that before a person can be returned as the winner of an election, he must have scored the total number of major lawful votes cast and also one quarter of the votes cast in two-third majority of the state. Now, Imo State has 27 local governments. Two-thirds of 27 local, local governments is 18 local government areas. Hope Uzodima did not win up to 18 number of local government areas. So what is the basis for returning him? Thirdly, having added the votes from the so-called 388 polling units, the Supreme Court did not consider it fit to now assess the spread of these votes against the number of local governments in Imo State. So having not done all of this, the Supreme Court could not have endorsed a lawful or a valid return of Hopus or Dima. So I, it, was, it was against this backdrop that Emeka Ihedioha and his lawyers felt they should go back to the court and point out this fact to them so that they may be impelled to take a second look at their decision and now correct some of these jurisprudential flaws. Unfortunately, the Supreme Court has said they're not going to do that because by being the final court of the land, they cannot be heard or seen going back or sitting on appeal over its own decisions. So it, it basically means, if I understand you, it basically means that the court did not review the case um, as presented, but they just didn't. dismissed they it didn't. outright. They did it. And in, in my, uh, if I might say this, in an opinion I wrote last week, what I said, it is not a must that the Supreme Court, after making this review, must return a Mecca Ihedioha. It will be sufficient if the court could further justify the decision it entered on the 14th of January. You understand? But the Supreme Court has failed to do either of, either of, either of these, preferring to rely on the argument of technicality. That is to say, being the final court, it cannot be heard or seen reviewing its own decision. Well, very, on, very unfortunate. On the flip side of this conversation, you and I agree that the Supreme Court is the final court in the land. Let, let's look at it from their position as well. Is it safe to say that before now, the questions has been, if, there is, if this review is allowed to go through, it's going to open a floodgate of more questions and more review of the Supreme Court uh, decision. Wouldn't that cause chaos in the land when the final court is no longer the final court? Well, for me, that is quite a, a technical argument. Now, let me concede that the Supreme Court is the final court of the land by virtue of the prohibition of Section 235 of the 1999 Constitution. But the Supreme Court rules, Order 8, Rule 16 of the Supreme Court rules, has given it the inherent powers to review its decision on a number of grounds. 
That is to say, where the judgment was procured by fraud or deceit, where the judgment was procured by misrepresentation of facts, right? In such a situation, an aggrieved party who goes back to the court, the Supreme Court is entitled to look at it again. You, you still now, the circumstances you still, you, of this case okay. is a clear case of misrepresentation of facts, which the Supreme Court ought to have looked at. You, you, you so still, it is not a question of whether to open the floodgates okay. or not. It is a question of justice. And justice, being a social value, must be at, must, at all times must be, be, be recognized by that court. Justice must always be done and seem to be done. Okay, um, I, I think I'll, I'll give a rest to that and just ask you what are uh, the lessons, or should I say, this whole situation uh, seems to be um, a sore point or a learning curve for the Nigerian judiciary. What would you say to that? I agree absolutely. Uh, like I, I made reference to an article I wrote last week, and I recommended that this situation is born out of the fact that our Supreme Court is very, very, very overburdened. That court is the most overburdened court throughout the whole world. You have few number of judges doing the work arising from every part of this country. Hello? Yes, I'm with you. So I believe what is happening today, while we are having judgments which do not look like judgments of Supreme Court, is because the manpower of that court is seriously deficit. So I believe it's time has come for us to increase the number of judges of that court so that they can, they can be properly equipped to do serious legal work over matters that come to them. You understand? Okay. So I think this is what this case has shown us. And I, the National Assembly, might want to amend the Constitution to increase the maximum number of judges of that court. As of today, the Constitution says the court should not have not more than 21 justices. I think the number of cases in the country at this time is enough for that court to have at least 40 judges. Understand? If we can expand the number of judges of that court, we can, we can leverage on this manpower to do serious legal work. When? But even beyond that, I think the time has come for our judges to adopt a very activist disposition because our democracy is still a very evolving one. So you need judges who are, who are, who are what we call creative judges, who should have an eye for the reality on ground in the society and use their judgment, their vantage points as judges or final judges to effect some of the social change which has, which has been the which has been lacking in this country for a long time. All right. Um, what, what do you foretell that the history book will say about this whole scenario, this whole development, this whole debate about the supremacy of the Supreme Court? What do you foretell the history book will say? Well, I, I don't think the history would be, uh, if, if for anything, the history would be that at some point in Nigeria's history, the Supreme Court refused to act like what we call what a Supreme Court would act like. Though we have seen this court in a number of cases act in that fashion, like we saw in the case of Amechi versus Wike in 2007, where the court rose up and stamped out impunity at that time. But I believe, unfortunately, the courts, the step the court has taken in recent years have not been quite uh, what you would expect from the Supreme Court. So I believe the court, this should be a moment of personal reflection for the court to look back at its glory days and see how it can uh, re bring back the, the book of those days. All right, let me, let me just, uh, this one is, what are the next steps now that the drama seems to have screeched to a halt? Whether we like it or not, there is a finality to the decision of the Supreme Court as announced yes. today. So. Now that it has scratched to a, a, a halt, what are the next steps? Uh, the, the thing there is, um, uh, I must commend uh, former Governor Mecca Ifedioha, who throughout the period of this legal battle have conducted himself in a very, like a true Democrat, whom he is. 
have watched his language throughout with this. He has always spoken in a very civil tone and demeanor. Uh, I think uh, uh, he will, in the next few hours, he's going to address his supporters, telling them to accept this as the ultimate will of God, so that Ali can have peace and stability in Imo State. You understand? Uh, he's still quite a young politician. Tomorrow he can still give his, uh, his shot at the leadership of that state. And for Mr. Hope Uzodima... Yes, I was going to ask you, him, what, what, what would be the task before him now that he can breathe the sign of relief that there will be no further litigation uh, on his, to his position, rather, as the governor of the state? Yes. Well, I will, I will hope he's going to tow the part of the man in Bayelsa State, uh, Governor Doye Diri, who, conscious of how he came to power, you understand, has treated in a very civil and peaceful manner, trying to call all parties to sheath their sword and come together to work to build the state. Since at the end of the day, what matters is the interest of the people of that state. So I will expect Hope Uzodima to also speak in that manner call persons from the PDP to come together and let them see how they can build and develop Imo states. Because at the end of the day, what is at stake here is not who rules the most states, but the welfare of people of that state. All right, before I allow you to go on this segment of the program, I'd like to ask about the projects that were backed upon by the very short tenor of um, Emeka Ihejioha. Um, I personally saw some uh, myself when I visited the state briefly last month. Will there be a conclusion, or will we see a case of abandoned projects in Imo State? Uh, well, um, I... I... <laughs> Well, I, that, that would depend much on uh, Hope Uzodima's um, uh, governance, um, uh, how he wants to go about governance in that state. But I don't think, in terms of infrastructure, there is little uh, Ihe has actually done. You understand? He has actually commenced to, uh, well, I, I don't think there will be a clear case of projects who are almost 50% uh, uh, done being abandoned. So I hope uh, Hope Uzodema will also try to uh, consume some of these projects to avoid uh, this incidence of abandoned abandon projects all over the place. I want to thank you very much for your time with us this evening. Thank you very much for the opportunity. All right, we'll take a short break now. And when we return, Kaduna State Governor talks tough against bandits in his state. Just stay with us. <laughs> 